Hello and welcome to stage nine of Giro d'Italia 2020, the final stage before the first rest day, and the second summit finish of the 103rd Corsa Rosa. It's a, one, it's a 208 kilometer slog from San Salvo to Roccarasso in the Abruzzo region. Rain is forecast for later in the afternoon. I can tell you there's been plenty of rain already today. And here's uh, what they face. The start of the stage, racing along the Adriatic coast is relatively benign before we head inland for the first of four categorized assaults along the way. Two category one climbs, two category two climbs. The first is the Lanciano Cat 1, which is actually the toughest climb of the day. And it will come just after the first intermediate sprint of the afternoon. Then we head towards the Paso San Leonardo category two ascent, almost 14 kilometers long. So it's uh, anything but an easy a uh, bit of a leg uh, gripper for the riders. And then we've got the Bosco di Sant'Antonio, another Category 2 ascent, almost 10 kilometers in length at 5% average. And then we head towards that summit finish, Roccarasso in the Aramonia Mountain. Category 1 assault, almost 10 kilometers in length, and an average of 5.7%, but uh, the final couple of kilometers are really, really tough indeed. Over 4,000 meters of climbing for the riders. So there's the uh, group that have assembled out front. We had four riders initially in the group, then quite a few managed to skip across. There's still one or two that fancy their chances, although the uh, advantage is now up to almost five minutes. So this looks as if it's the break of the day. Here comes the a big charge inside a couple of hundred meters to go. Visconti's a pretty good finisher, so he knows how to uh, nail this one home. But uh, Guerrero also showing some interest, as indeed is Castro Viejo. And it's four of the breakaway riders are going to challenge. The top of the hill is within sight. It's Visconti that I think is going to get this one, as we expected. And he goes into the virtual lead of the Magliazzura competition. Filippo Ganna back in the main peloton behind. is going to hand over that jersey today, one way or the other. Chapeau and congratulations wow. to this man, Mikael Bjergs got on. That is some ride. Four minute gap. That is impressive. Chapeau. I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's going to potentially could cost him dear a little bit later. But um, he's got on. And here come the attacks from the main peloton behind. Could this be Hamilton who's starting to uh, chance his arm off the front for Mitchell and Scott? Torrid week for the Australian team. Why not? Indeed, why, why not? And the gap at 2.52 seconds. If the front group really starts to capitulate, this could be a very, very good move. And I think that's Theo Gagan Hart now accelerating across the gap as a Castro Viejo uh, up front starts to attack. Amongst the uh, breakaway group up front. Apologies, Matt, because uh, Castro Viejo, we fancied this could be the case. And uh, Guerrero was pulling faces, but he he was spoofing uh, no one because he's right onto the tail of the Spanish rider. So it's Spain and Portugal at the moment. Into the closing couple of hundred meters. It's the world's slowest sprint. Castro Viejo launches. Guerrero comes around his outside. Guerrero has the strength to get up and around the outside of Castro Viejo. He leans across the man from Team Ineos Grenadiers. It's so slow. It's so agonizing. It's so painful. But River Guerrero's got to get there, I think. He's got a bike length advantage going to the line. He has defeated the Spaniard. It's victory for Portugal on the day. Victory for EF Pro Cycling. He's got to drag this one through the last couple of meters. He's there. He's done it. Ruben Guerrero can barely believe it. It's a second stage victory from the first nine for EF Pro Cycling. Ruben Guerrero takes the win on stage nine of Giro d'Italia. Vanquished once more for the second day in a row. Our team Ineos Grenadiers and he can barely believe it. Jonathan Castro Viejo had done almost everything right. But the man with the belief and the strength to match it. It's Almeida still with a distance to get to the line. There are going to be gaps here. Vincenzo Nibali has leaked time. That finish didn't suit him. Almeida finally makes it. And what is yeah. the gap going to be? Well, I count, I mean, roughly just in my head, I counted about, uh, it was certainly um, Kelderman took around 20, 22 seconds out of him. He should be fine for the, uh, the general classification. There's confirmation of your uh, finishing order at the conclusion of stage now. Ruben Guerrero getting the victory by eight seconds again you know, by over Jonathan Castro Viejo. It's unprofessional cycling, it's so hard to, to win, it's been my fourth year. Uh, after a few seconds, I finally I took uh, the win after uh, such a hard day. I still like swim with uh, the cold and uh, yeah, but I'm going to be warm for sure. And uh, it's amazing to take the second win for the team and for myself. Then I, I've been worked so much for, for this and 
it's amazing. Here you go, it's Joao Almeida who has survived and now ahead of Wilco Kelderman who has gained 18 seconds but sits second at a half a minute to Joao Almeida. Uh, well, so far day I can tell you I only keep this jersey and I fight so much because of the whole work for my team. It was super cold, it was super hard and uh, I fight till the end uh, until I could more. I, and I can keep the jersey and uh, thanks a lot for my teammates. I'm really grateful and, and thankful for them.